Ignatius's first rule can be summarized like this. The voice of the evil spirit and the voice of the good spirit will take on different tones or characteristics depending on the state of life of a person. So for example, if a person is not right in their relationship with God, if they're living in a compromised relationship with him, then a person in that state, the voice of the evil spirit will present pleasures and delights to the imagination of that person in order to keep them on that downward spiral, whereas the voice of the good spirit will sting and bite the conscience. So here's an example. It's not a moral example, but I think it illustrates the point. Let's just say on New Year's Day, you make the commitment to eat healthy, but a month later, you break that commitment. Let's say you go for some fast food takeout. So having done that, you are now in a compromised relationship with yourself. You are now living in the land of broken commitments, as it were. Ask yourself the question, if you've ever lived in the land of broken commitments, how much easier is it for you then just to say, I'm going for some more takeout. Hey, I've already broken my first commitment. At least it tastes good, so I'm going for it. And that's the key phrase, at least it tastes good. You see, when a person is living in the land of broken commitments, or when they're living in a compromised relationship with God, the evil spirit will say, this tastes good, this feels good, just go for it. Whereas the good spirit will sting the conscience, will sting and bite the conscience. So think of a parent's piercing scream to their toddler child who's putting out their hand to touch a lit candle. So that sting, for the person who's made the commitment to eat healthy, that sting or bite might come in the form of seeing a healthy food ad, or when they go out to eat, seeing their friend order a salad. Some of us might know what that sting on the conscience feels like. Now this is a relatively neutral situation, but the same dynamic can be applied to other more serious moral situations as well. So again, St. Ignatius' first rule is this. For a person who is living in a compromised relationship with God, let's say they're on a downward spiral, when a person's in that state, the enemy, the evil spirit, will present pleasures and delights to the imagination of that person in order to keep them on that slippery slope. Whereas the voice of the good spirit will sting and bite the conscience. Now, this dynamic only applies to those living in a compromised relationship with God. But for those who are living in a right relationship with God, those two voices of the evil spirit and the good spirit with their respective tones and characteristics, those two voices will become reversed. They will have the reverse effect on that person. But more on that in our next segment when we discuss Rule 2. Mm -hmm.